So we're still talking about God's love. This is part two. God has a plan for you. Amen. But God has a plan for you because he loves you. That's why he has a plan for you. He's not just planning for you because you're a human being among billions. He has an individual plan. That's what makes him different from us. There's no way we can manage that. But he can. Somehow he's able to know everything about you and everything about everyone else. And he's able to love you like it's just you here. And so he's so concerned about you, he can love you like it's just you. And that love, there's a plan because he wants the you he knows to be joyful. He knows it's not going to always be joyous. You're not going to always be happy. You're not going to always be smiling because he doesn't always smile. The Bible says sometimes he's not smiling. Sometimes he's not happy. Sometimes he's angry. Some things he had to do he would have rather not done. So you think he don't understand you? So he loves you. He's created a plan for you. An individual plan pointed to somebody and say, for you. It's just for you. Your name's on it. Your face is on it. The number of your hairs is on it. Just you. That's how much he loves you. Just you. He has a plan. And that plan is really not hard. It really isn't. Look at somebody and say, God loves you. First John 4, 19. We love him because of what? He first loved us. We talked about that last week. He loves us so much that he made his plan easy for us to apply. Easy. Matthew 11 and 29. Take my yoke up on you and do what? Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Meaning I'm approachable. I'm not going to belittle you. I'm not going to make you feel like I'm being condescending or just none of that. I'm meek and lowly. Meaning I came to your level to approach you through Jesus Christ. So take my yoke, learn of me, and ye shall find rest. Unto, how many of you need rest unto your souls? You need rest. You're going to find this rest in him. For my yoke is what? And my burden is what? So his way is the easy way. The world's way is the hard way, and yet they still are able to sell it to people. And then, then you get that deathbed confession. I wish I shoulda, coulda done it this way. Don't do it the way I did. Yeah. And I've sat with several people in that stage of their life and talked to them. And everybody says the same thing. What I thought was important ain't even important. Love your family. Spend time with your family. Love your children. There's nothing more important than that. That's all I want around me right now before I die. The money, the career, the fame, the, all the stuff that people chase means nothing right now. And I wish I had invested in that. They all say the same. God's yoke is easy and his burdens are light. If we abide in his plan, we can have peace on earth and not turmoil if you abide in God's plan. If you abide in God's plan, something you see on TV is not going to make your heart race to the point to where you're going to grab a stick and bust a windshield out. That's somebody that's not in God's plan. Somebody that's even planning to go out there off something they saw on TV. That's not God's plan. Look at somebody, I mean, but we should be, but that ain't God's plan. No. No, God don't want you risking your life. Listen, the life he gave you, you think he wants you risking it through an Illuminati agenda? Because of something you saw on a controlled television, you don't think the news is controlled? You think it's just live streaming stuff? 
or do you think they pick and choose what they show? No, 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 really, really. Does anybody in here believe that the news is covering all of the news? You know why you, you, know why you crazy if you believe that? Because there ain't enough time to do that. I worked in a newsroom. They have to pick and choose because we, we, we got 30 minutes. We have an hour. So they have to pick. So how do they pick? What is the criteria? I'm going to pick what's going to make people watch me. Because if I'm showing junk that don't matter, I won't get ratings. John 15 and 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will and it what? Shall be done. That's how you get your prayers answered. Abide in him, words abide in you. It changes what you ask for. That's why what you ask for happens. Look at somebody and say, act like men, if you're a man. If you're a man, look at a man and say, act like men. This is the worst thing that ever happened to America and the rest of the world. The emasculation of men folk. Men that act like women. Peace comes when a man carries out God's plan for him. This is when a man has peace. As a single man, single men, he should temper his flesh and discipline himself so he will be prepared to teach and lead his family when the time comes. Titus 2 and 6. Young men, likewise, exhort to be what? Young men, exhort to be sober-minded in all things showing thyself a pattern of what? Before you get married, before you propose, before you lay the mat and put on the, the herringbone. <laughs> you need to show a pattern of good works. Amen. Get you a pattern of good works so you can be proud of yourself with no one looking. Yeah. You can feel good about yourself without an audience. That means you're not trying to prove it to anyone. You're just proving that it can be done by you and you can overcome life obstacles and issues on your own. You don't need somebody to pour every issue into to make you feel better about yourself. That's going to give your wife the wrong disposition and the wrong position in your life. So you want to be able to do something good before you lay the Mac. That's why the Mac don't work sometimes. Amen. You, during the mat, you got more, you laying more problems on her than she had before she met you. It's like, ooh, I could do bad all by myself. Bruh. Amen. So, have a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, and what? Sincerity. So, just try to be a good dude before the mat. But in all things, you got to show a pattern of good works. So single men, get the pattern of good works. Show God that you can do good. Amen. And then he'll, he'll, he'll show you the woman that will appreciate that. Amen. He'll illuminate her. He'll backlight her. Sometimes it's a woman you've seen all your life. You've been around her. You saw whatever. And then one day. Ooh. And God will do that when you're ready. Amen. Amen. I know I'm preaching. The purpose of the man is to be a priest, provider, and protector of his home. How many times I got to say that? Y'all already know that, right? Y'all know that, right? It's not written in the Bible like that, but it's in there. If the man's ahead of the woman as Christ is ahead of the church, isn't Christ the high priest of the church? 
so you need to be a priest. Does God take care of the church? Then you need to provide. Does God protect the church? Then you need to protect. Amen. Well, that's just too much responsibility. That's because you're a woman, man. Who's scared of this? Like, you don't want to be that? I want to be that. I want some more words to add to it. Add some more words, Lord. I want to be all that. Because if I can be all that, then I know you're going to be pleased with me. Why would I be trying to take words out of it? Well, I'll just be the priest and the protector, and then she'd be the provider. No, I'll be the provider and the protector, and then she'd just be the... Punk? No! I want to do it all! And do it well! Why wouldn't I want to feel manly as a man? Cutting corners on manliness. <laughs> I'm not skipping over it. And the parts that I struggle with, I'm going to hang in there till I get it. Because that's what men do. Amen. You may not like the job, but you're going to hang in there. Because money is necessary. Isn't that, is that what men do? Nobody, nobody wants somebody to break into their house. But when they do, you got something for them. Because that's what men do. I'd rather it had gone another way. But because it happened this way, man rises up. I would rather be eating than not eating. How many of you would rather be eating than not eating? My body would rather. The crust around the corners of my lips would rather I be eating than not eating. Because you know it develops. I'd rather be eating than not eating. But for the sake of running demons out of my house and my family, I will push the plate back and fast as the protector of my home and be the priest of my home that I need to be. Of course I'd rather eat a sandwich. But if I need to stand up and be strong and protect my home, then I might not get to eat that day. That's what men do. Amen. First Corinthians 11 to 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is what? What part of that do we need to discuss? Y'all got it. Women, all y'all got that, right? The head of the woman is the what? Can we change it? No, because it is written. But it's not written to slap you and make you upset. It's written to protect you. God is showing you the order that works. Is this not the order that works? Who's going to stand up here and say this order does not work? No, you can't say this doesn't work because the scripture says this is God's order. So God's order has to be correct. And you can't make it wrong. Now the head of the woman is the man doesn't mean that the man beats up the woman. Amen. Amen. Y'all know I've been married 29 years this August. And so some of the stuff I say to you, you can't go do. It's not going to work with four years of marriage. And I apologize, ABC, because some people... I have tried to do that and I wasn't aware when I would say things that people would actually go out and feel and could actually immediately implement I'm thinking you know it's been 28 years 29 years and you know that you know I'm a little farther advanced in the situation amen the ink on your drop your marriage license is not dry and you trying to go do what I'm saying immediately. And it's not going to work. Amen. 
Amen. Like you don't even have the confidence to roll like that. You ain't been married long enough to be that confident. You ain't been through enough to know that she going to still be with you. I mean, you rolling dice every night when you wake up. I mean, it's... <laughs> oh, snake eyes. <laughs> she going to be gone. <laughs> you, you shooting craps. <laughs> you don't know if she going to be... That's what I'm saying. So you can't go home and bully yo. That's not what the head of your wife is. I thought I explained this. I mean, it, it feels like I did. Did I? But some people just, you know, they just take what I say and immediately try to do it. And your situation isn't the same as mine. If we add all of that up, that, that, that says that you just can't do everything you hear me saying. So you have to, and, and listen to this. I'll take my apology back. I didn't owe you that. I didn't. I didn't owe you that. You know why I didn't owe you that? Because you should have been following the spirit. So let me reel that apology back in. I did, I did not mean it. You should have been safe enough to hear what I said, get before the Lord, and say, okay, Lord, now what is your plan for me? Amen. That's, that's the reason. That's what makes, amen. That's what makes it easy. That's why it is easy. Because you can go right to God. And say, Pastor, is he talking about me? God has said, no. Not a five minute marriage. Yeah. And it's a bunch of people in here. So I can't individually talk to every one of you. So we have to leave it up to the spirit to guide you in your decision making. But I just don't want to be in no church where I can't sit down with the pastor. Bye. It's too many people. What part of my own family do you not understand? I have a family. And I try my best. Lord knows I try my best. I don't, they got to stop me sometimes. Because I will try my best to talk to everybody. But I can't. So we have to rely on the spirit. To rightly divide things. So you don't get a bad understanding of my intentions. And get offended. Amen. And most of what I teach, I mean it's universal. But there are some private, personal things I may share, but that's, that, it ain't going to work for you. Amen. You may be in a dysfunctional situation. You may have uh, children from other marriages or other relationships in your house altogether. So what you hear me saying about Vicky and Landon, it, it, it's not going to translate the same. It's going to be different. Well, Pastor, I mean, I wish you would, you know, kind of talk more to those situations. That's where I'm talking to situations in the Bible. Okay? But you have a Lord and Savior for that. You don't think he can help guide you through that? He guided Moses through his troubled past. Moses went through abandonment. Guided him to Jethro. For him to get advice on how to handle things. Because Moses, listen to this, y'all. Ooh, and this is in the Bible, too. I said this is going to be short. Y'all good? Man, ain't nobody scared of the COVID, are you? Y'all good? Okay. Because it's too late? I'm trying to figure out what kind of virus survives in that heat out there. But anyway, that's a whole other discussion. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a virus with legs and arms, Jack. <laughs> Shoot. He survived Texas heat. You wanted to get somebody. <laughs> but this story, this is, this is powerful. So Moses had the deficit of being abandoned, right? So he's abandoned by his folks. Well, when a person is abandoned, 
they don't like to make enemies. They want to be friends with everybody, right? This is why Moses couldn't go to the promised land because he kept trying to be friends with everybody. God said, don't do this. He's trying to please the people and did it and disobeyed God, didn't get to go, right? So he had this issue, this abandonment issue. Well, there was one occasion. This is just, oh, so God. One occasion where Moses, because he, you know, have abandonment issues, he don't want to turn nobody down. So the Bible said all of Israel lined up. And the path, they all lined up and start passing by him for him to give them advice on their situation. All of Israel. Okay, that's a bunch of folks. And then the Bible just says, like in the next passage, just out of nowhere, Jethro shows up. Now, this is all showing you the love of God, how much God loved Moses. I'm not going to call you to do this and, and you just have a heart attack in the process. So Jethro just shows up out of nowhere. The Bible just says Jethro, his wife, all of them just showed up. Jethro looked at the situation and probably looked at that line of people. You know how many people? And Jethro said, Moses, you can't do this. You can't do it this way. He said, you have to appoint people to handle these people. Now, and he probably said, this is me paraphrasing. He probably said, I understand, you know, where you come from, your upbringing and all that, and you just want to help everyone, you know, because you kill somebody with that same passion. So I know you just want to help people. You want to help everyone, but you can't help everyone, Moses. He said, they will wear you out. That's what Jethro said. They will wear you out. So you got to appoint people to handle this for you. So you can handle what you call to handle. You see what I'm saying? So Moses' situation was totally different than other people in the Bible who may have grown up a different way. They may have grown up and there was no abandonment. Both of their parents were there. God handled them differently. He dealt with them Based on that. But he had to deal with Moses and send Moses to Jethro. So Moses would have someone. Couldn't be Pharaoh. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So that's why you gotta, that's why he answered the burning bush. That's why he did what the bush told him. He answered God and he did what God told him. Because God knows his plan for you. So even when you hear me preaching, some stuff I'm saying is Based on what we've been doing and had to do, but the situation is different for you because your situation is different. So how do you get the answers for your situation? The same way Moses did. He relied on God and God gave him Jethro. Well, amen. Amen. The head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the, and the head of Christ is God. Y'all still with me? There is no blanket formula for the way your home is organized because there are so many variables in today's home. Amen? When I teach the creation role message, which I'm going to teach till Jesus come because that's the answer to all this foolishness that's going on. If the creation role had happened, all them folk wouldn't be out there feeling unwanted and unloved. Somebody would have been in the home with them. Amen. But the creation role message, you got to do what you can do because of the variables, based on the variables in your home. You hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, folk got to work. Folk. Everybody got to work. You supposed to be the provider, protector, and the priest. Well, you supposed to be dead free. So, uh, see you when you get off. Yeah. Then I get the angry email. I get cussed out in the email. That junk you preaching, that creation role junk got us and we done lost everything because... What does that have to do with me? You made a bad choice. You was listening to me when you should have opened your purse and listened. Can't do the creation role. Right now, can't 
but I want to turn. Just to lock the purse up in the closet, you can still hear it. You can't do it, and that's okay. You get before. You just can't do it. I'm tired of getting blamed for this, man. It ain't my fault. You tried to do something you shouldn't have tried to do. I want my kids at home. I want my kids at home. Well, we want some money at home. You can't do it. You can't do it. And it might just be temporary. Can you trust God? What happened to God? <laughs> listen, you can't listen to me preach without God. So there's so many variables. We homeschooling our kids. Well, but that's not your son. And his father says he don't want the son homeschooled. Everybody getting homeschooled. But he, he said, no. Look, somebody look at that. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, then what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to just let him do it. Well, that's his son. Well, I mean, well, but he more my son than his. No, he's not. Take a test. He's not. It don't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Well, what do I do? Pray. Do you know Jesus? Do, have you ever talked to him? I'm sure Moses didn't know he needed a Jethro. How could Moses know that? Moses looked at the bush and was like, do I even what? How, do, how would he even know that he needed a Jethro? But because he trusted God, God gave him what he needed. Amen. And you might need a Jethro. You might need something. Because your situation is different. It's a little complicated. So you got to try to work around the perimeters of the situation that you have to work around. With some common sense. Yeah, because the baby daddy going to email me. Cult leader, you leading a cult. You got everybody brainwashed. Bruh. They made that chip. Ain't no locks on these doors. Matter of fact, we grease them so they can swing. <laughs> Real easy. I wanted to go all the way back to the front part. We ain't holding nobody hostage. But man, you gotta rightly divide this stuff. But listen, listen, and I understand when you grow up without a father, when you grow up without that kind of leadership, you become, you know, you think the EX in EX Ministries means extreme. And I understand that too. But it's not. It's balanced. That's what I've taught since day one. We got to balance things out. You got to do things as you can do them. You got to organize your home based on the variables in your home. Your home. Look at somebody say, that's your home. Can't do what G. Craig do all the time. You can't do what Walter do all the time. Can't do what Julian does all the time. But the Lord is blessing them. So, Julian, what you be doing? What do you mean what I be doing? I mean, I need a list for everything you do because I'm going to do it so that I can have what you have. No, y'all y'all shaking your head and this has really happened in here. And then when it don't work, see, he a false prophet. Who? G. Craig. But Julian, I, how did it get back to? He said over there. But that's just imbalance. That's all there's no, and the balance comes from the Holy Ghost. That's what you consult. Every bit of your life. In all your ways, do what? How many ways? And then what'll happen? But if you seek God, for guidance, you can lead your home his, look at somebody say, your home. Your home, yeah, your home. I don't care how many kids out of wedlock you got in that house. I don't care what it look, I don't care if it look like the Brady Bunch house. God can help you lead your house. Amen. 
Psalms 37 and 23, the steps of a good man are what? The way it looks does not have to be the way it will end up. It is imperative that you trust God because he knows how to get your home the way what? It should be. Proverbs 3 and 6, and all that ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be a lady. Don't be a scoochie. Instagram scoochies. That's the popular thing now. Just showing too much and telling too much. Talking too much. No man going to want you. He know. He know. He already know. He already know. He do looking at your page and be like, oh, oh. I already know. Some stuff you need to just find out over a course of time. Because it may not even be an issue by the time he find out. But you just told too much to the worldwide web. I don't know how big worldwide is. That's the biggest thing we got here. That's the biggest thing we have on earth is worldwideness. Worldwideness is the largest thing we have. You never thought of it like that, have you? It's the largest thing in our existence, worldwide. So be a lady. Peace comes when a woman carries out God's plan for her. This is peace for a woman. As a single woman, be a lover of God and godliness. So as a single woman, love God's stuff. Why you like the devil? Devil's going to mess your life up. So you need to love godliness. I know that sounded plain and simple, but man, that's what women are doing now. Yeah, especially African, African-American women are so into witchcraft nowadays, it's a dirty shame. And I told folk about 10 years ago, when did Katrina happen? Katrina, when, when, yeah, 2005. Oh, that's 15 years ago. Man, I'm old. It just hit me. But when Katrina happened, I told folks, I said, all that witchcraft. Katrina is about to blow witchcraft all over the United States. Y'all remember me saying that? I think I preached it. Katrina's going to blow witchcraft all over the United States. And it happened. Now you can just go to a website and learn witchery. Just just go to a website. Yep, how you praying and burning sage to cleanse the atmosphere. That's witchcraft. Amen. Yeah. Having vegan, trying to be vegan, that's witchcraft. That's from Wicca. Look at somebody up. Now, vegan and vegetarian aren't the same thing. Are you chasing the light? Yeah. And then wonder why your life is the loneliest, wackest life you've ever lived. You're just unhappy with yourself all the time. Absence of God. As a single woman, be a lover of God and godliness, God's things. Ooh, it got quiet in here. Man, we're using burnt sage as an air freshener. That smells just like weed. I'm just doing it to make it smell better in here. No, that ain't what's happening. Do good and seek godly wisdom. What is godly wisdom? Oh, the Bible said let the older women teach the younger women. You a younger woman, you need to listen to the older women. A lot of you came down here mad at your mama, so you don't want to listen to no older women because it reminds you of what your mama said. But you need to hear it. Do good and seek godly wisdom. Let the older women teach the younger women. No, baby, no, no, that skirt don't fit you. Put it back on the doll. I saved some stuff from the swap because I knew 
somebody was going to need it. You need that advice. Some people just don't know. That's why we don't treat people like that. If we see somebody and, you know, they just may not know, so we're not going to just go up to them, Ooh, Jezebel slut! How dare you come in here? <laughs> Do that. You just go up to her, you know, and how you doing? What's your name? Oh, okay. Well, you know, come sit by me this Sunday. Sit by me. And then, you know, you have your little shawl on your knee. You just throw a little over on her. She tried to throw it back. She said, no, 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 no. You, you, you can have some. You can have some, too. I'm so out of control. I need to stop. <laughs> See, this generation, there's no way possible you could have survived in the churches I grew up in. They had a burlap sack that they had cut in half that they would come and throw on you and you would itch the entire service. Mites and everything else on it. <laughs> Potato sack. You would itch so you won't ever wear that again. You'd be thinking all service about your shopping spree you about to go on. Oh, I'm going to go buy all new stuff. You couldn't have done it. They say stuff in the microphone. Somebody get a sheet. Get a sheet. Somebody get a sheet. Especially when they would come up for altar prayer. You come up for altar prayer and bend over and stuff ain't fitting right. After you talk to the Lord, you get up, you wrapped in swaddling clothes. Looking for a manger. You, you, you just, you in a cocoon. You got to go back to your seat like this. <laughs> what happened? Somebody spun something around me. Just, <laughs> you're going to be a beautiful butterfly after service. That's the way they did. They didn't ask no questions, wasn't no conversation, nothing. Girl, you should have known better. But we give you a break now because a lot of you don't know better because your mama dressed like that. So we're trying to be patient and help you. But if you do good and seek godly wisdom in fashioning your life, you do that in preparation for your future. So you let women, older women that have been through things, made those same errors you making, they can help you avoid them and prepare you for your future. Amen? 1 Corinthians 7 and 34. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in what? Spirit. But she that is married cared for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So there's the difference. So the single woman, you care for the things of the Lord, how you can get your body right and your spirit right in preparation. Amen. Man, this is good to me. Creation roles should be the ultimate goal for God's creation because if he created you, then the way he created you to function should be how you want to function. Does that not just make logical sense? This means serving God as a single woman Marriage, nurturing children, or being a helpmeet for the husband. That's what it all means. That's what the creation role is. You're a single woman, be a good single woman. You married, have a good marriage. You have some children, nurture them. You married, be a helpmeet. The way things are now does not have to be the way they remain. But you must seek God for wisdom in preparing for what? The future. First Corinthians 11 and 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman what? Amen. Society wants all of us out of our roles and purposes. But the man and woman that seek God's will for their lives instead of societal norms will have what they prepared for. You know, you are a mature believer. Listen, this is a sign of a mature believer. A mature believer does not look at themselves and their situation and try to preach against the truth because it infringes upon the way they feel about the decisions they have made. We're able to look at the bad decisions we made and say, yes, my bad. That's a mature believer. 
So I'm not going to try to condition everyone to believe a lie because I don't want people to know I made a mistake. God don't use people like that. God's going to use the one that in spite of my error, I'm going to preach the truth of the word so you don't have to go through it. Amen. I mean, we wouldn't have the book of Psalms if what I just said wasn't true. All that worship came out of pain. First John 3, uh, 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we don't love the world, we love God. So we do things God's way, not the world's way. Now understand something. Some of the things in the world we have to do because we're in the world. So you can't just lay up and pray all day. You're going to have to go get a job somewhere. Unless praying is paying. (laughs) You work for a prayer ministry and they paying you, okay. But if other than that, you're going to have to get a job. You're going to need some some of the world's money to buy things in the world. So use some balance. Summary. What we want for ourselves can bless us or curse us depending on the motive behind achieving it. God loves us enough to purify our motives and temper our flesh so that when we receive of him, we are ready for it. So it's not that he don't want you to have stuff. You're just not ready for it. Look how you acted. Look how you are acting. You want stuff right now, it can't act right. Look at you. God loves us enough to purify our motives and temper our flesh so that when we receive of him, we're ready for it. There is nothing for us outside of God's creation roles. There's nothing except coveting, wishing, wanting, and desire. That's it. Outside of what God created you for, wishing, wanting, Desiring, discontentment, striving to be something in the eyes of others or receiving things to prove our worth is of the world and not of God. His process requires cleaning our hearts of issues and offenses that will cause us to be envious of others or to use God to impress others. God doesn't want to be used. He wants to be loved. You don't think God knows when you're using him? Father God, in Jesus' name, a real show told. <laughs> give me a raise, God. Oh, if you give me a $10,000 a month raise, you make 10 a year. What are you talking about? If you give me a $10,000 a month raise, Lord. <laughs> you know, you got to make the extra noises. Ha, ya, 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 ya. Give me the 10 times. See, because God, what I want to do with it. Oh, I want to bless the work of the ministry. God, I want to bless the work of the ministry. God, I want to see your work. Yo, not my, your work. Not my, your work go forward. Your work go forward, Lord. Your work go forward, Lord. (laughs) But you won't give nothing down. You won't give nothing now. And why are you asking for so much? You showing to God you're not a good money manager. You done axed off the grid, bruh. <laughs> you know how to ease into it. Uh, just a little increase here and there. Just break, break me off a piece. You done just went 10,000. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. God, if you do it, oh, oh, all the people, all the hungry people, the hungry people overseas. (laughs) God don't want to be used. He knows you're trying to use him. He knows you're trying to use him. Unfortunately, because so many of us, and this is the sad part, grew up equating love with using others, 
it's hard to understand the difference. So because you were put in a position where you had to use, maybe your parents broke up or whatever, so you go be with your father, you use him to get you things that you couldn't get from your mama, or vice versa. You grew up with that. Now you're treating God like that. God will not allow us to come to him unless we are truly seeking his plan and not our own. This is why a lot of people just aren't saved because they're trying to seek God for their own plan. He does not, look at somebody and say, he doesn't work that way. You're not going to come to God for your plan. And this is why your prayers don't get answered. That's your plan. You can't find that in the Bible. God will not allow us to come to him unless we are truly seeking his plan and not our own. This is why a lot of our prayers go unanswered. It's because what you desire is based on vindication and vainglorious intents. It's trying to show somebody. See? Unanswered prayers can cause people to feel unloved by God because they didn't get what they asked for. However, God is a responsible father. Well, I never had a father, so I don't even understand. Moses didn't either. God sent him Jethro. God gave him what he needed so he could see what he needed to see. However, God is a responsible father. So in order to receive of him, there's only one way to receive of God. I'm a living witness, and many of y'all in here are living witnesses. And many more of you are going to be living witness from what God showed me. God showed me he's going to bless some folks in here. He's already started, and he's going to keep doing it. But don't clap yet. There's a contingency. Did you hear me say God is a responsible father? So in order to receive of him, you must what? Do things his way. Yeah, his word is telling you his way. His prophet, preacher, pastor is telling you his way. God is a responsible father, so in order to receive of him, you must do what? He's just got to do things his way. Man, this generation's in trouble, y'all. I hope y'all praying for them. Jeremiah 3 and 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to strangers under every green tree. You know, went to idols and everything. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. So what does God say? This is love right here. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I'm going to bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall do what? Feed you with what? Knowledge, Knowledge and what? Make you understand your situation give you the knowledge that you need to go before God, get what you need from God, implement it in your home, and have a good life. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. Boy, I'm telling you, this social media done gave everybody the opportunity to comment on everything. Folks sit in church wanting to comment. Some churches have Facebook live streaming from the church and all of my hearts and comments and junk just fluttering on the screen while the preacher's talking. In the church. We love you. Hey. Yeah, just everyone comment. Everyone give their comment. How do you learn with comments? Can you imagine being in class, in school, and everybody get the comment every time the teacher say something? Could anybody learn? That's not how you learn. Well, why do they expect the church to be that way? Because if everyone has influence over the church, then what is the shepherd for? Why is there a shepherd? Why is a pastor even called to pastor if everyone's comments, if he's governed by everyone's comments? So we got to get it together. We have the last hour. Fourth quarter, and I want to make sure I'm in the right place. If God loves you that much, you need to make sure you consult him for his plan for you. Amen? Everyone bow your heads.
Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this message. We thank you, God, for your truth. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, Lord, for your healing. We thank you, Father God, for just loving us enough to allow in our own city to open our doors again so we could be in here together. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to come before you, to trust you, to love you. Father God, to follow your word. We thank you, Father God, because you love us so much. You love us enough to give us a plan, Father God, that will work in any situation. If we trust in you and our ways acknowledge you, you will direct our path, your plan for us. So I pray right now for every man, every woman, every single man, I pray, Father God, that they would prepare themselves. Every single woman be prepared. Every married man, Father, that they would stand up and be the provider, protector, and priest of their home. Every married woman, that she would nourish her children and be the help meet God, no matter what else is going on. God, some folks are in debt. Some folks just have just a lot. They need money. They need all the situations are different, God. So however their situation is playing out, I pray, God, that they will seek you for the answers they need. Not try to implement a man system. Not try to implement the world system. Not go by societal norms, what they see on Instagram, what they see on the Internet. But, God, that they will get before you and find the truth for your plan. The truth of your plan for them and their home. So that they, Father God, can be the answers that their children need. No matter where their children came from. No matter if they're outside of their marriage or just whatever the situation is. God, that you could give them the direction they need, God. Lord, there is no situation that you can't handle. So, Father, we trust you right now. We trust you right now. Everyone, just lift your hands up. Your plan, God. Let your plan rest upon us. Speak it to us in the night. Speak it to us during the day. Speak it to us during our prayer time. Speak it to us during our reading time. Speak it to us during our study time. Speak it to us during our recreational time. Father God, let your plan be ingrained in our hearts that we will not stray from it. Give us the scripture we need. Give us the passages. Give us the confidence. Give us the faith. Give us the, the fruits of the spirit so we can stay this course and finish this race and not be plucked out. In Jesus' name, we pray. And Father, with all our hands lifted up, I just pray for each and every person here that you would protect us physically. Father God, from all ailments, any fear of ailments. Father God, any fear of COVID or coronavirus or any fear of protesters or wickedness that men are doing. Father God, that you would remove all fear and we will walk in this last hour believing that you will walk with us, that you will protect us, provide for us, and be our priest in this last hour. In Jesus' name. Amen.